love that showcasing abilities. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. That is right on line with you and I, Doug. <laughs> There's no better marriage. Oh my God, does this mean I'm, I'm no, I don't want yeah. to. I've already got one man. That's all I can do. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Showcasing abilities because in our work, your work in the world and mine, that's what we're trying to help people do is to showcase themselves, show show up and shine. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's there's two words that every that I teach from the front of the room that I teach in my books, and those two words are performance and recovery. Everybody mm-hmm. wants performance, but only. 15% of the population will, will admit they need to go into a recovery program. That just doesn't line up, right? So right. Hey, people obviously don't understand enough about, you know, recovery and performance and, you know, what trauma is and that it's not mm-hmm. a big scary thing that we all have it, right? Uh, it it, it'll always be with us, but it doesn't have to control us. And sometimes don't we let it control us? I mean, everybody, you know, like put your hand up. Everybody's putting their hand up right now. And if you're not, and you're by yourself, you can do that all day long. But when I put you in a room full of people and you're the only one sitting and everybody else is standing, they, you know, you got to come to terms with some stuff, right? So that's and, right. And if we can help you, uh, help people that are listening to come to terms with them, some things or to be able to help somebody else in their life, then, you know, that's a mission fulfilled, right? That's a, that, that's right. what we're trying to do. Yeah. Well, over the years, uh, of course, because I've been on the air for a long time, but just in my work, um, I've worked with pretty much every profession out there, including veterans and including athletes. And we know that, uh, you see a lot of people when, when our self-worth is damaged as children, when we've been told we're not good enough or we're never going to make, I had a great, my, my homeroom teacher in grade 10 told me I'd never amount to anything. Mm. Because my marks weren't reflective of somebody that was really smart because I found school very boring. And I went, oh, I'll show her. And I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. So, but because of those early, early childhood, I mean, you had a huge trauma when you were an adult in, in that injury, but the trauma begins long before that. And so a lot of nature, we've all, I always say we're just all busy doing things to recover from our childhood. Yeah, like I was, I was getting a piece of chalk in the side of the head, you know, at least they didn't throw the chalk at the girls that often, right? Well, there you go, right? It's like That's they're, they're right? So, yeah. so much trauma and, and I can demonstrate if you look at my story and you look at the pictures and the video and where I was and what I did that I, I, I wasn't in control. I was just, I, I was, my subconscious mind was running rickshaw over, over my life. <laughs> and and yeah, and, and to demonstrate that the performance on the ice had nothing to do with my physical ability. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as I was was physically able to play, it was the mental ability that that drove everything, that drove my point production, uh, that that put me in the penalty box, that that created bad relationships with other players, that mm-hmm. that did all this. Those that's that those were my emotions. So that was my mind. That you know, I could I could have danced around that physically, but I I chose to try to run it over, which was which was there a mistake. Go. And we'll talk more about our own stories because I've got a bunch of them too, recovery stories, right? Yes. And um, so let's let's share with our viewers, uh, who are we looking for to have on the show as guests? Because oh. we want to be able to bring people to the show that you would love to see or hear from, um, you know, whether, 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 whether. So, so Doug, uh, let's uh let's have our viewers anytime they want to put a post up or anything about who they'd like us to have on the show yeah and like we, our reach is, our, can go. And we've talked about this before our reach is pretty much unlimited right like so i can mm-hmm. pick up the phone as a former nhl player who can articulate and call anybody and they'll actually take the call and so my network has grown over the years because i was in the technology industry so i've leveraged that knowledge and and, and so we're able to reach out to the world now and, 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 and if there's anything that we can help you with, uh, if you're looking for something specific in your life that you need to fix, just, just reach out, like put it in the chat, let us know what's going on, mm-hmm. uh, communicate with us, right? Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes, would you agree, because this is a question you can answer, 
Um, it's very difficult, especially people who have, let's say, a celebrity status or a high profile position in the military or a high profile position in a corporation to actually step forward and share that there's something going on for them that they need to look at. But as far as that goes, we'll be having those guys on and gals on the show too. But who do we want? We want people who are open and willing to share their stories, their recovery stories. Yes. Uh, professionals who have something to offer, because I know in your, in your contacts, you know, you have some medical people, a credential who could come in and talk about what you do. Or how to make the workplace better. You know, because right. the, 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 there's new technology with respect to the workplace. You can help mm -hmm. thousands at a time. So, yes, mm -hmm. like we're going to be having people like that on. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Right. And people who, uh, you know, I guess maybe I'll put a plug in for our event that Doug and I do once every quarter. We call it the Recovery and Performance Summit. That's coming up March 1st, 2nd and 3rd. We always have 21 amazing people, speakers come in. It's a three day event online. And we have people share from all over the world their recovery story. And Doug was one of our speakers last time. Uh, so we want people who have, because part of recovery and performance is inspiration. So people need to be inspired by those who've already done it. Because most people might, I don't know about you, Doug, but when you were hurt and you were struggling, um, when we're going through something, we feel like we're the only person in the world mm -hmm. feeling this way. Did you have that experience, Doug? Yeah, the, the first person I reached out to was a guy that I knew in high school that I had known had broken his neck about five years earlier, and he had learned to walk again. And so I, I went through my database, I went through friends from high school, I tracked uh, Neil Fairburn down. And uh, he came and he was the only visitor I would have in the hospital when I was paralyzed because I didn't want anybody to see me because I couldn't, right. I, 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 my identity had been ripped out of me. Yeah. And, and so I needed every ounce of knowledge that somebody who had learned to walk again had. I needed it all. And now he wasn't a doctor. He wasn't a medical person. He was somebody no. who had done it before. And I right. guarantee you that if you're in a hospital bed and you have a spinal cord injury, you, you, you'll be wishing and, 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 and praying that you have that person in your life. So I was very, very lucky to avoid some of the pitfalls that he had actually walked into. And, and so it, it saved me time. And when you have a spinal cord injury, when you have neurotrauma, it's time that's your enemy. Mm -hmm. Right. So and, and we're going to explain stuff like this on the show um, yes. more in more detail. But. You know, I've, I, I, I'm a reader, I'm a voracious reader, you know, books on psychiatry and psychology, you know, my books are on, on trauma and, and, and of course change, trying to get through change because what's the difference between change and trauma? Who likes change? I'm not seeing yeah, any nobody, hands. Nobody in the, in the audience. The screen, <laughs> get back in the screen there, Doug. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody in the audience likes change. That's what I found. <laughs> Well, I have a wonderful story that uh, actually, actually cements that, okay, because we resist change. And those things that we are resisting are, in fact, the very things that we need the most. So let's say I'm, I'm a single woman in my 40s, and I really would love to have a partner, but I'm not going out on dates, and I'm not going to the online dating, and I'm not going to let some guy into my life but deep down inside of me, I want to have a partner. So the resistance is the thing that we really need. So well, that's one little tip for today. Mm. If there's anything out there you're resisting, like a good health product or downtime or knowledge or whatever, it's probably because you really need it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love it. <laughs> and about it. change, uh, I'll just share one more quick story, Doug, and then back to you. And uh, then we'll, you know, take a break after that. But I uh, just want to remind our viewers that you're watching the press box on the disability channel. And Doug and I are both, we're like, I don't know about Doug, but I'm like a little kid in a candy store today. So that's why I'm all excited. But anyway, I don't, it takes a lot to impress me now and it takes a lot to get me excited, but I am excited about this. I have to thank you again, Doug. I'll be forever grateful to you. But change after I left teaching, okay, 
he wanted to get it. And this is no do uh, all do no disrespect to my teacher friends or anybody in the system or anything. But five years after I had left, I was in the community. By the way, the community where I might say a former NHL player, Cam Russell, came out of this community, Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia. And uh, he was my grade six student and he was 5'11 and I was 5'1. But anyway, that same school, I was in the community and I thought, gee, it's 1030. I'm going to go in and have coffee. The teachers will be in the staff room recess. I still had friends there. I walked into that room, Doug, and they were all sitting in the same chairs that they were sitting in when I left. And prior to, they were all still wearing the same old nubby sweaters. Not a hairdo had been changed. Wow. And you see, the reason I went into teaching, a couple of different reasons, but when you, we went, I went right back into the system that had programmed me because that's where I felt the safest. Mm-hmm. I didn't go out and be a banker or, right? Mm-hmm. People fall back into the same. And then I, you know, and, and stay in the system mm-hmm. because it's safe. And no changes mm-hmm. <laughs> are required much. No, <laughs> not so much today with the technology, but I'm talking back in the day. Mm-hmm. So over to you. What do you know about change? You uh, Would you agree with this statement? If you're not willing to change, you're going to be forced to change. Something's going to happen to force that. What do you think about that? Well, what's forcing it is, is physics and mathematics. You know, the human beings and and the whole story of change which which we'll probably go into on one of the shows mm-hmm. you know back uh, hundreds of years you know shows us exactly what's happening right now with respect to you know the human being and 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 how they process change and you know the on the, on the medical side you've got in psychiatry you've got they're finding markers for all the things that cause the brain to degrade you know like alzheimer's and dementia so, so we're on this cutting edge of, uh, of everybody waking up to, to the mm-hmm. fact that it, that it leads us, right? And, and that we need to pay close attention, very close attention. And, that, and that's all we're doing on the show, really, is, is we're just going to be drawing attention. We're going to be bringing on people that played in the NHL. We're going to be peop- bringing on people that led the Canadian military. We're going to be uh, bringing on people who jumped out of planes and were medics in the military. You know, all, all these incredible things that you only see on TV, we're, we're going to bring them to this show. We're going to bring them right here live. And we're going to have a serious conversation about some of the things that can happen to you when you go through change. Absolutely. And the fear of change is what prevents people from changing. But when you get over that hump that you're talking about, then you welcome it. You want it. You crave it, actually. Yes. Because life gets very exciting then. And it gets very worthwhile and you can fulfill your purpose and make the world a better place. My goal was always to just leave it a little better than when I arrived and leave it just a little bit better than when I arrived. And the kinds of uh, thank you for sharing who you want to bring on. And I have some very incredible people in my life, too, Mm -hmm. that um, I want to bring on. I've worked very heavily and am heavily involved in our indigenous community. I've worked on and off reservations for 25 years. And so I have a lot of experience there and stories and people that I can bring from that community. And also, uh, I'm going to uh, hone down one of my psychiatry friends in Taiwan who actually put his professional mental health care staff through everything I've got. And uh, we... um, I won't mention his name until I have permission, but I do have a letter of recommendation from him. And what he did when he was busy working on his own self-worth and his own confidence level, he was the chief of psychiatry at a big hospital in Taiwan. And halfway through, he left his position and started his own clinic because he wanted to put computers into his clinic so that the families of the mentally ill patients could access help programs, products, and they're one of my clients. I went to Taiwan in 2007. Wow. With that I had, they brought me over after that to do some training. So, yeah, so, you know, I have those kinds of people and uh, people who know that, uh, 
you know, whether you're coming out of a really bad relationship or an abusive situation or a mental health situation, a physical situation, because it all impacts how we feel about ourselves and how we value ourselves. And nobody ever taught us, you're supposed to love yourself. Doug, how many times have you heard that? It's a good thing for you to love yourself. <laughs> but did your mom ever sit you down? I know mine didn't. Mm -hmm. Tell me how to, love, how to do that. So that's what we did. How to people, just like you, Doug. Yeah. We're going to take a little break. Do you want to just close us off here before we take our break with some words of inspiration around that? Well, no, I just, Lori, I, I can't wait to hear more uh, of your story and the deeper moments of your story um, because they're, they're, they're just fascinating. And, and coming from a teacher's perspective, I always had a lot of respect for the teachers when I was in school, but I, there was somehow something missing. So everything you talk about with the education system, I want you to expand on as well uh, during the course of the show. So people can really get a, a good grip and, and be able to make a, make a better decision if, if, if they're having some challenges in a certain place. Well, thank you very much. And yes, I, I, I bailed out so I could do school my way. <laughs> very so, nice. Before, very yeah, nice. Before we go to break, uh, you're listening to the Press Box here on the Disability Channel our first show episode one season one and looking forward to lots of great shows down the road um doug smith and dr laurie davis over to you lewis 